Hi young people, I hope you've had a really great week um, and have had a really good start to the weekend so far. Um, today we are looking at our last piece of the armour of God, so we've done uh, five already and this is the sixth piece of the armour of God um, and that is the sword of the spirit which I believe is definitely the most important part of the armour. Obviously you need it all um, but I think this is the most vital part. Um, so, unlike the other items that we've already looked at, this part of the armour is less for um, defending yourself uh, and actually more for attacking. Um, so if you're in a battle you would use a sword to attack someone rather, well I guess you'd use it to defend yourself as well, um, whereas the other items of armour are just to defend yourself. Um, so now the part of the Bible that uh, it talks about the armour of God is in Ephesians 6 and uh, the second part of verse 17 and uh, kind of talks about um, very briefly what uh, the sword of the spirit is. So it says, and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Or uh, in other versions it says different things but it's basically saying take the, the razor sharp sword um, which is the word of God. Uh, the word of God is the Bible, okay? So, right, so why is the Bible, um, uh, the Word of God, associated with a sword? And it is our, probably our next question, it's like, oh, that's a bit strange, like, a sword and, like, some words, how do they go together? Um, and this is how, really. So, actually, you know, a sword is a sharp and powerful weapon, uh, and the Word of God is described as that as well in the Bible. Um, the Bible helps us to... Uh, attack the devil uh, when actually when the devil tells us lies or when the devil tries to tempt us uh, actually we can use the word of God we can use what God has spoken uh, to us um, so that we can stand in God's truth and we can defend ourselves uh, and we can also then attack back at the devil and say actually no I, I'm firmly believing in what God says um, and I don't believe in what you say um, and there's a verse uh, in the Bible that describes it perfectly. Um, let's have a little look in our Bible. I've got um, a study Bible, which I find really, really helpful, just uh, to plug that to you guys, which is uh, a New Living Translation. Um, and this is, a, this is a Bible verse. It's, a, it's in Hebrews 4, and it's verse 12 and 13. And it says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the, only, uh, he is the one to whom we are accountable. Okay, so the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Like, wow, that's a really, really powerful image, isn't it? And actually, um, this uh, part of the Bible is often quoted when you're talking about, okay, what's, why is the Word of God so important? Um, and actually, there's a, a note in my study Bible, and I just read it, and I was like, I don't even need to say anything, I just need to read this. Um, because I think this is really helpful when we're thinking about what the Word of God is and why it's associated with the picture of a sword, okay? So it says this, it says, The Word of God is not simply a collection of words from God a vehicle for communicating ideas. It is living, it is life-changing uh, and dynamic as it works in us. Within, uh, with the incisiveness of a surgeon's knife, God's word reveals who we are and what we are. It penetrates the core of our moral and spiritual life. It discerns what is within us, both good and evil. The demands of God's words require decisions. We must not only listen to the word, we must also let it shape our lives, okay? And, you know, the, the part that really, really just stands out for me is, you know, it's it's living, it's life-changing, uh, and actually it reveals who we are and who we're not, which is a massive thing, isn't it? It's talking about our core being, who we are. Um, at, the, at the core of our being, if you stripped everything back, cut everything away, uh, who are we? Uh, and actually, you know, the Word of God can speak right into the core of our beings in, in the same way and speak to everything that we are and change who we are and shape who we are uh, as we learn more about Christ. 
So, uh, next verse um, I've got to look at. Lots of verses today, but it's good. It keeps us fresh uh, as we look at, uh, at the Bible and why it's so important. And, uh, you know, this battle actually between um, the devil and uh, between us, it's actually not always been that way. It's not always uh, been just us as, uh, you know, imperfect humans uh, and the devil. But there was once a time um, when Jesus went head to head with the devil, okay? The devil's there like, yeah, no, I'm pretty powerful. Uh, I'm going to... Um, basically come and screw you up and you're not going to believe in God anymore, you're going to follow me. Um, and Jesus just wasn't having it. So uh, let's have a little uh, look at that. It's a slightly longer story, but I think it's really important for us to grasp this. Okay, so it's in uh, Matthew 4, and it's verses 1 to 11. So it says, Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Jesus ate nothing for 40 days and 40 nights. Gosh, I would be hungry after that. Um, after this, he was very hungry. <laughs> there we are. The devil came to Jesus to tempt him, saying, If you are the Son of God, tell these rocks to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written in the scriptures, A person does not live by eating only bread, but by ever everything that God says. Then the devil led Jesus to the holy city of Jerusalem and put him on a high place of the temple. The devil said, If you are the Son of God, jump down. Because it is written in the scriptures, he has put his angels in charge of you. They will catch you in their hands so that you will not hit your foot on a rock. Jesus answered him, it also says in the scriptures, do not test the Lord your God. Then the devil led Jesus to the top of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendour. The devil said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all these things. Jesus said to the devil, Go away from me, Satan. It is written in scriptures, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. This is my favourite part. So the devil left Jesus. <laughs> and the angels came and took care of him. Wow. You know, like, that's such a powerful part of uh, the Bible. It's Jesus, you know, who's the most powerful God, um, stood up to the devil and actually quoted scripture, quoted the word of God, quoted the Bible, quoted what God had said, uh, God's truths, back at the devil and said, hey, no, I still believe in God my Father. I still believe in him. I still know that he holds all the power and you don't. Um, and <laughs> I just find it hilarious when I look at this because it's just like, yeah, God, you're the one with power. And, the devil, and it says, so the devil left Jesus. Like... You know, he just left. He was like, all right, I'll just give up. Like, because you're not swaying from from God. You're going to keep on following him. You're not going to follow me. You know, when when Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus fought back. Uh, he used his sword. He used the word of God. Um, and the devil just went running. Because actually he was like, yeah, I'm nowhere near as powerful as you. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> like, um, and And the reason he went running is because Jesus threw all these things back at him. He was close to his father and he kept his sword really sharp um, by letting God shape his life. Uh, you know, he knew uh, he knew God well. He would, you know, read the, um, the scriptures. He would, um, you know, speak to God and he would worship God through his actions and through how he taught. Uh, and everything that he did um, led him closer to, to God as father. And actually, we need to be the same. We need to let God shape our lives. Um, and when we're thinking about that, it's like, okay, so how do we have our sword of our uh, sword of the spirit? Uh, how do we have this weapon? How do we use it daily? Um, and how do we keep our swords sharp uh, so that they are ready for battle? Uh, and actually, it's pretty simple when we look at um, the Bible and what it says. Um, Actually, we just need to walk daily with God. Uh, we need to read his word. That is so important. The Bible is um, such an important part uh, of walking um, uh, with God. Uh, and actually, read his word, digest it, like learn the truth of what it says, um, and really believe it and take it into your hearts, memorise the scripture, uh, all those things, so that actually we learn 
and we learn truth. And when the devil then tries to tempt us or speak lies over us, um, or just do horrible things uh, to kind of push us away and make us be like, oh, God's not there for us. Uh, actually, our swords will be sharp. Our swords will be ready for battle. Um, and they'll be sharp enough that he'll just leave in the same way it says, so the devil just left. Um, he'll just leave because he knows that actually um, we have God and with God we've already won. Uh, so he has no power against us to kind of push all these lies um, uh, and all this temptation on us. Um, we've actually got our swords at the ready um, with the word of God ready to go into battle with him. So, hope that encourages you this week. Keep your sword sharp this week. Read your Bible. Dive in. If you're struggling with your Bible, just start somewhere that you find a bit easier. It might be a story that you know. Uh, or I like to read, when I'm struggling to read my Bible occasionally, I just read the Psalms because I find them really raw and really honest. Uh, it helps me to kind of refocus. Um, but think about what, um, what you want to do this week. Maybe set yourself a little reading plan with your bible and be like oh well, i'm going to read these chapters this week and keep your sword sharp this week okay so that's our teaching for today also um two things so one there is um i had an announcement this week it was some really exciting news uh, there's a video on facebook to look at and you should have also been emailed your parents should have been emailed so have a look at that check that out so that you're up to date with um, with my exciting news and you can almost celebrate with me from your own homes um, also youth camp was meant to start today oh sad times um, obviously it's such a shame that we can't go away together and have a really fun week um, at youth camp and worshipping God and spending time together um, but we want to bring again youth camp to your home so there's so many good things that I'm going to suggest uh, in the video description or maybe even do a separate post so have a look at Facebook and have a look at YouTube and all those things and we'll put all the things up there but just quickly to say what they are uh, there's May Camp which is for uh, which is a youth camp for young people they're doing some online stuff um, tomorrow and on Sunday which will be really really cool loads of um, live chats and discussions and uh, things like that uh, secondly there's Big Church Day Out is going live so they've got um, you know, worship, loads of worship sessions with different amazing Christian artists all like, all weekend. They've got kids stuff, they've got, you know, some um, fun activities to do, they've got some more upbeat songs, they've got some slower songs, different artists uh, from different denominations of the church. So that's already awesome. That's this weekend as well. Uh, and then going into next week, I think it's Monday through to a Wednesday or Monday and Tuesday, um, Wildfires is doing some online stuff as well, so there'll be online adult sessions, youth sessions, kids sessions, all loads of amazing, amazing resources uh, that you can take hold of, use, uh, it will encourage you, I'm sure, help you to worship God this week uh, and just maybe retune in um, uh, with God and um, yeah, just like connect with God in maybe a new way, um, a different way than what you have been, how you have been connecting with God throughout uh, lockdown. So, that will all be up there. Again, there's activities and stuff to do this week, as usual, but they're the main things. Do check them out this weekend because you do not want to miss out on all of those amazing resources. So, have a great week, uh, have a great weekend, enjoy all those different things. And we will see you next week, hopefully super encouraged uh, and ready and rowing to go um, for what we're going to talk about next week. Great. Have a great week. See you later.